Okay, let's overreact to Summer League. Uh, we are going to start with Reed Shepard. After that, I don't know the order. We're just going to stick to the rookies. I know Shepard wasn't as great in the last game, but overall, he's been really good. And first off, with the shooting, I mean, we all know he was a great shooter. He has made so many different types of jump shots so far, and that's the biggest thing with him is that he was a great shooter in college, right? I mean, you're talking pull-up threes off of screens, catch and shoots where he's like a foot behind the line, super quick trigger, doesn't matter. Pull-up twos off of screens, little down screens where he's getting the ball on the move and then floating into a pull-up two. So the shooting has been exactly as advertised. Then when we talk about the way he's been working around screens, where the Rockets have been very comfortable with him dictating things on offense. I mean, the Laker game, you had, I don't, I don't know who the defender was. This was one of the times when Bronny was not on him, but uh, it's like an in-and-out dribble just to get the defender off balance just a little bit. Then he goes around the screen, and then it's into the pull-up three because the big was also dropping back on the screen. Another play in that Laker game, this is one of the few times he missed a jump shot where he dribbled the ball way out in front of him because his defender was trailing him and the big was once again dropping, so there was that airspace. So he just dribbles way out in front of himself to where he can catch it on the move and flow into a pull-up too. Just like real crafty stuff. He's had skip passes. His chemistry with Cam Whitmore has been good. Like he's had plays where he'll bring the ball up and he'll just say, hey, somebody set a down screen for, for Cam so I can just hit him on the move. Like he's stopping on a dime in transition and being like, okay, where is Cam Whitmore? Because I know he's on the fast break. And suddenly the Rockets bench is like loaded here, man. I mean, you're talking Reed, Cam Whitmore, Amen, Steven Adams, Tari Eason. Should be good. And Shepard's also had times where he's just been kind of cooking as well, you know, getting into crossovers or like they'll set him a screen super early, like in the backcourt to where he's just getting downhill. Like the amount of confidence that they have had in him in summer league to just be a decision maker, like it's been really encouraging. We are now going to go to Risa Shea. I do wish that I got to see more plays of Risa Shea just doing something off the dribble, but I understand they don't want to run just pick and roll for him at the top of the key all day. That said, whenever he's been able to get like a down screen where you can catch it on the move, I have liked what I've seen. I mean, there was one play in one of the games, I don't remember which one it was, where um, they ran a very quick screen action for him, and he was able to get like this scoop lob pass to the big that was pretty good. He had this one great, like, behind-the-back pass, whether it was in transition or off the catch to a corner shooter, I don't remember. I'm sure you've seen his one coast-to-coast -coast dunk so far. I've also liked when he's been able to get some position around the basket to where they're throwing entry passes to him, because he's got enough length to where he can convert some of those plays. I've liked when they've gotten that to him a little bit. He's shown some juice off of, like, drives off the catch when he's getting it from the corner or whatever. Like, again, I wish he would just, like, get featured more, but I get why he isn't. And then as far as, like, the three ball... Yeah, he should be good there. Defensively, I've liked his energy. Just he, he looks very jumpy in a good way when he's like kind of helping off of his guy from the corner or the wing, whatever. He's had a couple plays where like he might get beat initially, but then he does a good job like trailing his guy to block him or contest him well at the rim. Uh, as far as the handle when he's trying to create for himself, he's had a couple of plays where like the moves are good, but he's not really driving off of them. So take that for what you will. Like Reese Shade to me, he looks good enough so far to where I think you're fine with it if you're a Hawks fan like yeah I don't think he's done anything like eye popping but besides like maybe one three that he made on the move where he got it from a down screen and I was like oh okay like that shows potential like high-end shooting stuff okay now let's talk Alex Sar. so um he's played more than two games but I do feel like there's been like two games where I kind of got my, all my feelings about him summed up so yes he went oh for whatever in the last game he missed like seven threes he got blocked by Donovan Klingon he took a couple of bad floaters and just weak layup attempts versus Donovan Klingon, which, by the way, Klingon is a rim protector. Like, yeah, exactly what we would expect. We'll get to him when we get to him. And Sar's shooting splits are pretty ugly in the summer league so far. But I did think in the game against the Hawks and Reese Shea, there were some things to take note of, especially one defensive play where he switched on the perimeter, and then the ball handler tried to take him off the dribble, wasn't able to do it, they passed out. Then he rotated from the three-point line down to the rim and was able to force the driver to uh, pass out. As you might expect, I did not learn the name of every single guy in Summer League. I mostly stuck to the prospects. He also had some good passes on the roll in that game as well. Offensively, yes, it's going to be a process. And the game against Donovan Klingon, not every single one of his misses was against Klingon, but yeah. He took seven threes. Most of them were catch and shoots or pops. One of them was like a contested three. If you were looking for some physically imposing baskets from Alex Saar around the rim, well, anyway. Bub Carrington looks very confident. I mean, the one question with him was, is the three ball going to be there? Because he was cooking for mid-range in college. He's stepping into threes with confidence, man. He made a big three in one of those games late. Next, we are going to go to Stefan Castle. So the first game that he played, which was like one of the first summer league games, period, uh, the first thing to notice was just how good his handle looked and how comfortable he looked moving around screens. He was making skip passes. He had wraparound passes. He had just so many good passes where his teammates, for the most part, were not converting them. Uh, and I also did think that he might have leaned a little too hard on like being a pass first guy. 
but the passes were good. And, and eventually he started stepping into more threes with confidence. And like a couple of his early threes in that game, like he passed up and then he, he made like a pull up. He made a deep three off the catch and shoot. Uh, and that's a big thing is that he's been willing to take the threes outside of the first couple of minutes of that first game. He's had a couple of screen plays where he's been able to like really fly off the screen. One of them, he was going at Klingon, which I think resulted in like a floater. He had like a really good wraparound pass around Klingon, one of the games they played. Now, Klingon did block him at the rim, and also in that one game where I was saying the nice things about him, like Castle also did struggle to finish at the rim in that game. Sure, in the last game, he went 8 for 21 from the field, and he had five turnovers and four assists. But for me, the vibes feel good. And of course, defensively, every scout loves him. I'm going to cheat from the going in order thing. Uh, we're going to talk about Cody Williams and Mataz Buzelis next. Cody Williams, who through three games now has been really efficient and to bust out a cliche for you, everything looks easy for Cody Williams right now. And it's not like there's anything too crazy with what he's doing. I mean, it's catch and shoot threes, driving off the catch. He's had a couple of actions on the side where he's getting a screen and then he'll like dribble to one side and then he'll like spin into the screen as his defender's trailing from around him and then he's just... Looking really composed finishing around the rim. He's had some backdoor cuts that have been good. He's had good kickout passes in these scenarios as well. Like, it's really nothing too outside the box. It's just being really solid and composed. And this was the hope with Cody Williams, right? It was, yeah, he's probably going to have to put on some pounds, but the idea is he could just be solid across the board. Now let's talk about Zealous, who is not afraid to get his shots up and is trying to get to the basket. I mean, he's already had, like, drives off the catch. He's had transition plays where he's, like, kind of contorting himself after picking up his dribble to finish through a couple of guys, we've had uh, one great transition dunk. We've had him finishing a couple of lob plays. He took a big guy off the dribble, like starting from the corner on a switch, was able to like hit him with like a between the legs into a crossover, finish with like a lefty finish at the rim. Uh, he has had, he had like one back down where his defender fell down and then Mataz missed like this 12 foot jump shot. But the point is, is like, okay, we're, we're backing dudes down already. This is good. So, I mean, we'll just see how much the Bulls allow him to uh, play like this when the real games start. Because you can't just forget about him out there. Like, you have to feature him. He's best, like, trying to get downhill, stuff like that. And, of course, he projects well as a team defender with his length. He's looked very confident. Uh, sure, he has not made every single shot. Like, you know, I've seen him airball a floater. But I, I was intrigued that he was able to get by his defender with just a straight line drive dribble with his left hand. Another time where he was able to get to the paint pretty quickly driving by his guy, and it wasn't a switch or anything, uh, just from catching the ball. And the defense collapsed on him, and he lost the ball. But again, like, he got there really quick. Okay, now Donovan Klingon. Rim protection, baby. What did you think I was going to say here? I did like that his first play of the first game, I forget who it was against, he basically just puts his arms up in the air with the guy around him. Doesn't even have to, like, jump or anything, and he manages to block a shot just off of that. Again, if you saw the game against Saar, like, you know how that one went. The thing with Klingon, I will say, he did look kind of tired out there. So that'll be something. And also in the first game, they weren't really able to get him into his passing bag like that. The second game, they gave him the ball at the top of the key or on the wing. They allowed him to find cutters, and that looked better. The other thing is that he actually has been attempting threes. And, okay, like, don't take too many, but this is the time to take them. So, I mean, we'll see if that ever becomes anything. But, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, just him standing in front of the rim, whether it's blocks, whether it's vertical contests that don't result in like a block or anything all that looks good you know guys were taking floaters around him and they were making some don't get me wrong, like stefan castle had a floater over him that was nice uh Klingon got him back later by blocking him but yeah his presence around the rim is just whether it's blocks whether it's altering shots making guys kick out all that stuff i know that sounds super simple but there's only so many ways to describe that now we go to ron holland and i'll say for holland as well as tijan salon the next two guys here both of them play very hard. Uh, a couple plays for Holland for you. Like, there was one play where his guy was running up to get a uh, a DHO, then into a screen, right? And Holland just goes like crazy to try to break up the play, and he actually drew an offensive foul on the screener, like an illegal screen, right? It could have been the other way around because it was a lot of bodies crashing into each other, but the point is, like, his effort created just the whole mess of things as opposed to his guy just getting a clean DHO into a screen, right? And then there was one transition play where he's running like a madman to get the ball. And he beats basically everybody up the floor, especially from where he started. Like, it was pretty wild. But then he had so much momentum that he missed this up and under layup thing. So you got that for him. And then as far as getting his offense off, I mean, he had a back down that was interesting. He uh, had a number of plays where he was just kind of lingering from within the three-point line to maybe screen for somebody off the ball and then cut off of that. And he's getting a pass and he's going into a floater or whatever. Obviously, we'll see with the jumper in time, and we will see if the Pistons can find ways for him to just get driving lanes, because I don't know if you're going to want to give him the ball at the top of the key and just let him cook, but if you can hit him on the move, like, you know, you set a screen for him, then he can catch it, I think that could probably tap into uh, probably his best shot of scoring in the half court right now. 
Now we go to Tijon Salon, similar to Ron Holland, plays really hard. First thing to notice with Salon is that he is tall as hell. And what I saw from Salon very early on was he was able, he was willing to crash the offensive glass from the three-point line. Like, if you don't box this dude out, he is going to annoy the hell out of your team. He was also very willing to just try to do something on offense, for better and for worse. So, like, the good signs are, like, he has the ball at the top of the key, he throws it to the guy on the wing, he immediately goes to set a screen for the guy on the wing. Just trying to create something, right? The downside is there were a couple of attempts where he tried to go coast to coast with the ball, where he just had no business trying it. Like, the defense was ready for him, there was, like, at least one guy waiting for him, and he either turned the ball over, or he almost turned it over, or... Like, he turned it over, got it back, then committed, like, an offensive foul. Those were rough. However, he did also have one time where he did try the coast-to-coast, -coast, and he actually kind of looked like a freight train, where he was able to get into, like, a Euro step, three-point finish. It was a blocking foul, and, I mean, if he keeps on trying that, like, he's going to pick up some charges, I know. But the energy, the effort, the hustle, all of that is there. I mean, defensively, he is so jittery on defense. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know where the skills are going to get to. I don't know where the defensive IQ is going to get to. But he's going to play like a madman. And he's 6'10 with a 7'2 wig spin. Dillingham, the shooting splits have not been great so far. That said, I think you've still seen some plays where the shiftiness and the pull-up shooting is there. And his passing has been good. As far as his teammate Terrence Shannon Jr., who was the 27th pick to the Wolves, to do a bit of a throwback here, I'm getting some Corey Maggette vibes from Shannon. Just a strong wing who is just looking to drive and keep on driving. Not saying that he's definitely going to reach that level of scorer in the NBA, but more so... In a summer league setting, those were the vibes I was getting. It's only been a few games, but he's averaging six free throw attempts per game. Unfortunately, we've only gotten to see one Zach Eady game, and in that game, he showed off why you should be excited about him, because he can just be a force around the rim, and also screen setting. Now let's talk Khalil Ware. So the thing with Ware is that he's a skilled big guy who can roll to the rim, he can pop for jumpers, he's athletic, he's skilled, right? However, there were questions about his motor, and in the first game, I think the fear about his motor seemed pretty justified because he was not making contact on screens and basically every shot he took was just kind of some flailing floater, very quick jumper. But since then, it's gotten better. He did get five blocks in that game, and that's another thing with him is because of his verticality and everything. Like He can certainly get contests around the rim. Not that he's like clinging when it comes to rim protection, but more so like, yeah, he can certainly block a shot at the rim. But then in the next game he played, he was like much better on screens. He was getting back downs. He was getting more hook shots, just fighting for position, just looking better, right? And since then, he's had plays where he's like, you know, going in transition for finishes or he's making a three or whatever. And so on Miami, where they are going to make him have a high motor because if he doesn't, he's just not going to play. It's probably a good spot for him. And I do wonder if we could see him playing with Bam for some minutes. Like, where is not going to start, but, you know, some minutes with Bam, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Jared McCain, I know what the shooting splits have been so far. His passing has been good. I do think on Philly, just in a reduced role, where it's going to be a little more of just catch and shoots, catch and drive, make the next play. I will assume his efficiency gets better. And then we have Dalton Connect, where he has shot really well from the field in one game, the other one's not as well. But even so, uh, the confidence is there. Like, he's been definitely willing to get shots up. And my feelings on Connect are pretty much the same. They're not really altered by Summer League. The shot should be legit. And we will just see if the Lakers run him in actual sets and if they give him real minutes or if he's just kind of in and out of the rotation and they just kind of plant him in the corner.